So we're going to talk about co communities in a moment, but let's take a very quick segue to talk a little bit about demographics of the networks. These things are always changing, they're always fluid, like who uses these networks? Things, these things always change, but in general, let me tell you from my understanding and some of the latest information that I have here, Pinterest, this is the easy one to say at the moment, Pinterest, the largest demographic, the, 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 the demographic that's most interested in Pinterest is women. So if you're reaching a female audience, Pinterest, studies show, is the best demographic, is the best network to go for. More, more, people are, more women are using Pinterest. Conversely, Google+, that one seems to be more, more men or more male. Google+, is a little bit more male uh, focused. It, that's what it seems to have happened with with time. Uh, Twitter. This one is a little bit more focused on the nebulous term younger, whatever that is defined as. But it, the younger people seem to be using Twitter more. Now it's not to say that you're not going to get a female audience in Google Plus. It's not to say you're not going to get a middle-aged audience on Twitter. It's just saying that studies are showing that Commonly, these are the larger groups there. And Twitter in total has about 320, we'll say these are total sizes. We can look up the exact stats later, but Twitter has about 320 million users. Google Plus, this is uh, difficult to pin down an exact size, but I've seen it between 200 and 400 million because Google Plus likes to count people that also have a Gmail account with people that have a Google Plus account. So the number's probably inflated, but it's still hundreds of millions of people. Pinterest, I haven't looked it up very recently, but it's probably also in the about 150 million range, probably more by now. Instagram. This one seems to be skewing younger and female. So if you're going toward a young and female audience, Instagram, although of course every demographic is there, but this is the bigger one. And Instagram just reached about 500 million users about a month ago or so. So half a billion people use Instagram. That sounds really big, but Facebook is the biggest one. And that one's about 1.6 billion people use Facebook globally. So then who's the demographic that uses Facebook? That one is that one is everyone. With 1.6 billion people, yeah, it's it's fluid. It's used to be young people. It used to be only college students. It used to be only Harvard college students. Then all college students. Then high schools. And then regular people. Then businesses. Then older people. So everyone, really. Um, it's just going to depend upon also how you reach that audience with any of these networks. Yes? Everyone I talk to that's in the know, such as yourself, says Google Plus is better than Facebook, but I don't know if hardly anybody uses Google Plus and they always use Facebook. Did Facebook just get ahead on the, the game on the branding and everyone knows it? Yes, it? Facebook's been around for 10 years, and um, it's been, it's been a, a snowball. Uh, it's been a steamroller. It just keeps growing and growing. And throughout the years, there's always been some controversy with Facebook every six months, every 18 months. There's always some controversy with Facebook. And people vow to leave it, and they don't, because it's already built. My friends and family on it, how am I ever going to talk to them? Besides Facebook, besides a phone, whatever. So people just have built this critical mass, and there's been many networks out there that were the Facebook killer. The only thing that sort of feels like it might kind of be it is Instagram. It's reaching up closer to Facebook than the rest. But guess what? Facebook owns Instagram. So if you're building up, if you're leaving Facebook to go to Instagram, you're still in Instagram's, you're still in Facebook's embrace. Uh, so yes, Google Plus is very valuable. We'll talk about that, which is communities in short. But all of these could be a very, poten a very good potential audience to get reached. I forgot to look up the stats for LinkedIn, but this is also probably like 200 million or so. So hundreds of millions of users. 
Uh, who bought LinkedIn? Microsoft bought Microsoft. LinkedIn. So, owned by Microsoft. Owned by Facebook. And then, of course, uh, Google Plus owned by Google. Now, there's a lot of speculation, especially after LinkedIn was bought, um, that someone might buy Twitter. Uh, and they're saying, well, maybe Google will buy Twitter. Uh, maybe Microsoft. Maybe someone will buy Twitter. Maybe Apple will buy Twitter. There's just so much speculation in this. Who knows what will happen? But there's hundreds of millions of users, and there's some overlap. Some people that use Twitter also use Facebook and vice versa, but a lot of times a person uses a network because they don't want to use the other networks. They don't have something that that network has that another has. And we can go on and on. We're not going to talk about it in this class. It's kind of complicated. There's Snapchat, of course. This one, um, this one is, you know, young, trendy people. Although that one is starting to also be um, middle-aged, older people, etc. People try to check this out, what Snapchat they like it. And I think that one's under 100 million. It's probably around 80 million. But it's obviously pretty famous. You hear about it all the time for positive or negative, usually negative. But Snapchat can be very powerful for brands. But it's still, it's Snapchat is the most different of all of these. Yes, you can share photos and video and such, but it's just so different because the basic concept of Snapchat traditionally is that whatever you share then disappears after 10 seconds or two seconds. You put a time limit to your content and then it disappears. So how am I as a marketer going to see how that's effective? Everything disappears. They've started to do new things with, uh, what do they call them now, stories or moments? It's got a term. Where now you can start to save some of this a little bit more temporary, uh, more permanently. So I myself admit I have to also go in and kind of educate myself more on Snapchat. I haven't, uh, I've used it but not as much as these other ones because for brands it's a little bit harder to use I think. What Vine? Again we can go on and on and on to many kinds of networks. We're not going to talk about Vine in this class but I like Vine also. It's a video sharing site then we might as well talk about YouTube and that's another popular one and on and on. So the ones we're talking about in the class Pinterest, Google Plus, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Those are some stats there. And we're going to talk about also YouTube in the class. Um, this one's everyone. Everyone uses YouTube because uh, young people that want to look up the latest, uh, you know, funny videos, people that want to look up a tutorial, professionals that want to put commercials there, and that one's also got probably around at this point 900 million users. Owned by owns YouTube. Starts with goo and ends with uggle. Google owns YouTube. So some quick stats and concepts. And again, you can find an audience in any of these networks, but it'll be perhaps easier to find a specific audience in a specific network. The big secret on Google Plus to find that audience that really cares is communities. Collections are something that you create, people find, and follow. That still relies on the various tactics we've talked previously about to try to get followers, to try to build awareness. Google Plus with communities has an amazing built-in way for you to suddenly reach a lot of people that are interested. Communities. The, the YouTube community has 3 million members. The gaming community has 1 million. The Minecraft community has 173,000. What this is saying is 173,000 people on Google Plus care about a topic so much they've chosen to join a community. So let's say I'm going to select Minecraft community. Don't click join yet. Click on any community to look at what's there. What you will see is posts by the members. Jasper posted this. 
Nuclear X robot posted that. Redstone charger posted that. Tuttles pointed that. People, different people post to a community. That makes it different than a collection. Only you can post to a collection. So we'll write over here. Communities. Anyone can usually join. Um, many people post to it, compared or contrasted to a collection. Only you post to a collection. The secret is as much as appropriate post to communities to reach an audience. If I'm a company, if I'm a food company, a bakery, I want to reach an audience that cares about food. So if I go back to communities, okay, here's one, cakes and baking. 759,000 members. That means that if I post to this community, automatically I've reached 759,000 people. I have zero followers still. But if I post to this community, I reach a quarter of a million. The way I post to a community is by joining it. If I click join, I have the pencil. Now whatever I post here, could reach 759,000. That's the big secret to Google+. Join communities to post to communities that care about your content to get much bigger boost in people that, can, that you can get conversions from. Question? Can you search for community topics? I just tried and it just took me to the community. It took me somewhere else. Yes, if you are on the communities screen mm -hmm. and at the top you click search, I'm going to search for cookies. I'm going to ignore these results here. I'm just going to search cookies and press enter. Mm -hmm. It'll then give me results of people's collections, keyword cookies. It's going to give me communities with keywords cookies. And it's going to give me people's posts, people's and pages and posts with those keywords. So I see vegan cookies, Thanksgiving cookies, well, uh, communities, cakes and bakes, recipes and desserts, baking, G plus sweets. Look at all these people I can quickly reach. 75,000, 20,000. Well, I'm going to click join, join, join. No. You're going to first check that the community is appropriate for you to join. So there's a lot of caveats. I'm going to say here, the big secret again, the big secret of Google Plus is communities. However, communities have a lot of caveats, a lot of things to be aware. Some communities you must ask to join. Some community, most communities simply have click to join, and you're in, and you can post. Some communities say ask to join, so that means some moderator will check you out, will go to your profile and see what is this profile about, why should we let them join? Again, three to five posts, fill in your bio and graphics, because someone's going to be checking, why would we let this person into our community? Let me back up here. Communities are moderated. But not <coughs> officially by Google+. A person can create a community. You can create a community. You can then moderate it and run it with an iron fist. And people do this. People create communities. They're a moderator. They then decide what's in the community. So if I simply click to join all of these and I start to post the same thing on all of them, one moderator there might take it bad and delete your post. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario, they kick you out of the community. 
and you lost access to 75,000 members. And because these are moderated by not official Google Plus people, Google Plus will not intervene. I've tried to do it. Personally, I've, I joined a community over a year ago about, I think I might have mentioned in this class or my other class if you go there, uh, one of my hobbies is comic books. I like to read and collect comic books, therefore I go to Comic-Con. And so I was at a community here sharing photos from Comic-Con. And I would see that my photos would get removed by the moderator. The moderator, there was no rule, I was following the rules of course, but that moderator wanted certain kinds of pictures of Comic-Con to be uploaded, and I wasn't uploading that pictures to his specification. So eventually, he removed me from the community, and I lost access to 100,000 people that probably liked my pictures, but he didn't. I went then to the Google Plus... Um, there's a Google Plus community here. I think it's the Google Plus Help community. That one's officially from Google. Um, one of them somewhere here. And I asked the people of the official Google Plus help community. Right there, Google Plus help. One million members. I recommend you join it. You can keep up to date and ask for help. I asked the official people from Google Plus, hey, I got kicked out of this community. Here's the proof. I was posting on topic things. This person runs it like a dictatorship. Can you help? I said, sorry, we cannot help. They invented the community. They moderate the community. And as long as the community is not violating the terms of service of Google Plus, we can't do anything. So I can't get back into that community. There was another related community with less people, probably refugees from the other one. And then we're all there and we're all having fun. But that other one with more people, I can't get back into it. I can see what's there, but I can't post anything. I can't take advantage of the community. Not take advantage, but I can't use it to, for its purpose. So my caveat here, communities are moderated, but not officially by Google+. So follow the rules. Every community is different because there's one or more moderators that decide on what the rules of their community are. That's why don't simply click join to all of these. Let me try this again. I'm going to search cookies. I'm going to go look at the recipes and desserts community. And somewhere on screen, usually on the left, you will see about community. Maybe it's called rules of the community something here you will find some of my favorite recipes that I cook often for my family also a few of the recipes have been passed down in my family for generations if you love southern cooking this is the place for you new recipes posted every couple of weeks so check back often okay I don't really read anything there about do not post your own photos do not post your own links let's see if I can find another one there are plenty of draconian communities out there a community for everyone who enjoys the sweeter side of life. Come, connect, and discuss baking related topics and tips. Again, I'm not quite finding it, but you might find one that says, do not post commercial pictures, do not post advertisements, do not post more than once per day, do not cross post, which means don't post this picture to this community and to another community. How will they know? Well, the moderator here obviously has nothing better to do, and they're going to be checking everything that's going on, and they're going to check that your picture is in two communities, so they'll remove your picture, best case scenario? No. Best case scenario is they just tell you, oh, honey, sorry, don't do that. Don't post more than once. Only warning. Next case scenario, they delete the post. Worst case scenario, they delete you from the community. So always read the rules of these communities before joining. All of these seem like pretty nice communities so far. Community for everyone, whether you are a professional or someone who just loves baking, share your recipes, techniques, uh, just as pictures. Baking could be about fun. Please don't spam, though. This isn't a page for you to promote your business. It's for recipes and tips. So I wouldn't post a link there back to my website, but I could post a photo of my favorite pie recipe and get, my, get the word out of my business so again, read the rules, follow the community rules. Yes? So if 
you will post once you click join because I'm just previewing the community. Once I click join, then I'll get the pencil down there and now I can post to that community. It says right here, you're about to post to the Cakes community. So community caveats, communities are moderated, follow the rules, some communities you must ask to join. So before you do so, make sure you have a good profile and content to prove you deserve to join. Someone in the community, a moderator, there can be more than one, will then vet you. They will check your profile. Oh, I see they are posting about cookies and cakes and all of that good stuff, so we will let them into our community. Oh, they only posted one cookie picture and everything else is cat pictures? No thanks, we won't let you join. So it's going to depend on the moderator. So as much as appropriate, post to communities. Instead of simply going to your home screen and sharing something, I have zero followers, no one's going to see it. Instead of doing that, join communities, post to communities, and you're going to see your interactions suddenly increase because you're posting something that someone cares about in a location where they care about it. If you post it just to your home profile, no one's going to find it unless they stumble upon it via search. But if you post to a specific community, people are there for that purpose. So post on topic, pictures, text, polls, videos, whatever, to the community following the rules, and you'll get a lot more activity. This works so well for all of our clients. We, when we get hired by a client for social media, we tell them we would like to offer you a package for Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. And then there's other packages with other networks and so forth. And then with all of those networks, I, we do what I talk about in these classes, like posting to communities. And these clients get great results. Sometimes it's a little harder because, let's say I am a um, travel agent. Well, what am I going to look for here? Travel agent. Communities. Travel the world, travel agent chatter, travel agents of India, travel and tours in India. Okay, well, possible places for me to join. This has only got 3,300 compared to 114,000. Ask to join. Very exclusive. Commun more community caveats here. Um, check the community for a critical mass of members. Short answer is at least 1,000 members. If there's a community with 70 members, is that enough to build your, your, your company on? If you have 400 members, is that enough for you to maybe get some of these sales or conversions. What's 1% of 400? Four people? A thousand members, at least that's 10 possible conversions. 112,000 members? One million members? But be careful about very large communities. And these are one million plus. With so many members, there's so much content to push you down. Do you see some of these communities with a million, with three million? Right here, the photography. I'm a photographer. I want to get hired for photography. I'll join this one with nearly three million people. Well, this was posted two minutes ago. This was posted three minutes ago. Three minutes ago five minutes ago, five minutes, ten minutes, five minutes, eleven minutes, stuff is posted on a regular basis. I'm going to post my amazing photo of a flower and one minute later there will be three new things there. So with these large communities you're going to get drowned out in the crowd unless someone is just browsing and browsing and browsing and then they see something and then they click like and then move on. 
because remember likes are the, the lowest level, they're very transitory. The next level is a comment, although although again the value of these things ultimately is did I make a sale, did I get traffic? Look at this rules here. No profanity, spam, violence, hate speech, nudity. No pornography. You will be banned with no notice. Do not post more than once per hour. Keep posts relevant. No selfies. Original posts, please. Only share posts from other profiles when it makes sense to. Repeated violators will be banned. 2.9 million members. Now, this is a rule that I myself break. I'm a, a member of a couple of million member communities. And it does work, but it's very fleeting because so much stuff gets posted there. But uh, it, it is a quick boost to post things to these million member communities and people see the content and click and watch your video or follow your link, yes. But then they quickly forget about you. The one I don't break, though, is the small communities because, again, you need a critical mass. You need a good enough gene pool to build a, uh, a community and to sell products or whatever. So there's that. And lastly, before joining, that this one also, before joining, before joining, check that it has a critical mass. You don't want to join a community and then there's no activity, which is this one here. Before joining, check the community for activity. There may be 10,000 members, but only a few of them are active. There may be 10,000 members, but no one is liking, no one is replying, no one is sharing, no one is being active. Uh, everyone's just using it as a place to promote themselves, and therefore no one's really paying attention. Yeah? How do you check that? I'm going to show you right here. So the way I would check that is, I would go to a community. Let's say I'm interested... Let's do again here, cakes. Let's say I have all of these results of cakes. Okay, 9,000 members. Cake pops and cupcakes. Sounds interesting. So 9,000 members. It's above my 1,000, so it meets that criteria. This is how you check it. You look at the community and you see there's only one like here, two likes here, four, three, five, one share, zero shares, one like. If there's comments, you'll see, you'll see comments below it. I haven't seen that many comments. This one with 9,000 is okay. I am seeing that some things get some activity. So just look at the stats here. Check the numbers in each post to see stats. Mm -hmm. This is just someone posting a link on someone's <coughs> post. That makes me, makes me feel like spam. They didn't say anything meaningful like, here's my version of the recipe. They just posted a link. And I'm seeing here, Linda, 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 Sabor de Fiesta. Linda, Kiribolini, so this community, it has enough members, but I probably wouldn't join it because it doesn't have enough quality activity. Let me go back and see another one. Recipes, no, cakes and cupcake lovers, 8,000. It's got a few less, but again, I'll look. Nothing there, five... Five, one, two, three, thirteen. So this one was a hit. At the very least, I can see, well, why was this one a hit compared to this one? They're both cakes, they're both tasty. Whatever reason, this one got more, more likes compared to the ten more than this one. You don't you don't know what's going to be a hit. Um, Possibly this one is a collection of three photos at once. More things to look at. This one's just one photo. You can upload more than one photo. It makes a little album, and then it looks like this. So you can see a nice album. Maybe that's why you know, the, the Batman cake was very popular, I guess, and then it, it caused more plus ones. And although the converse here, eight 
photos at once, and it only got five. So you don't know. That's why you, you post something. The basic goal is a new post once a week. That's basic. One post per day is better, but what am I going to post tomorrow? What am I going to post the next day? So as you get your feet wet, as you get acclimated, one post per week is a good goal. As you follow other accounts and communities and collections, you'll see what are people posting. I can, I can do that photo. I, my cake is as good. I just need to get my camera out and take the photo that kind of way with good light and maybe put a cool filter to so get inspiration by what other people are doing. So it sounds like a lot of caveats, and they are, because communities could be taken over by spammers if the moderator is not paying attention. Communities could be taken over by apathetic people that just want something rather than contributing, even just a like. Um, the moderator could be a real dictator. So if you follow all of these, this, however, is the big the big secret, the big, uh, the big way to get the most out of Google+. You reach the audience that really cares. It's about targeting. Is our communities, which is targeting. Modern, effective marketing and advertising is about targeting. Who's going to care about this message? That billboard that's out on the street, lots of people see it. Lots of impressions. But who's actually going to call the phone number? Those are conversions. New digital term for an old concept. Conversions, impressions, still in the real world and in the digital world. So if we're targeting to the most communities to get more impressions, higher percentage of conversions for our CTR, click-through rate, our efficacy, our effectiveness. And then I think in general that's the big idea for Google+. Uh, we'll do some general questions. Oh, one thing here. If you join a community, and you go back to communities, you will see recommended communities. These are the ones you're a member of. And if you no longer want to be a member of a community, you go to the community and then there's a little... It's kind of hidden here. It's hidden inside of this uh, three-dot menu. You can click there and you've got leave the community. Uh, I guess you can also click on that. Yeah. Confirm, stay, or leave. So when you're looking at your community screen, here's the ones you're a member of. You have yours. You can create a community. Don't create a community. Don't create a community because then now you have to be a moderator. Now you have to kick out the bad things and keep the good things. Now you have to build an audience for people to come to join your community. Not only are you trying to bring a, build a following for your main profile, now you've got to build a following and foster a following for a community. Don't join communities. Become members of as many as you want, contribute to them on topic, have fun at them, follow the rules, and try to do the communities, but it's, it's not going to work out. I've dabbled in it for myself and for one other client, and it's very hard to build a community unless you really keep at it and get other people that are popular to get other people to get, that are popular to get into it. It's, just, it's not worth it. What's the advantage of someone trying to commute? The big thing about creating the community is that you're building an audience that really cares about a topic and therefore that's a, that's a captive audience. Some people do this also, you know, for, for fun. If they're running it as a the social and social network, well, you're meeting interesting people talking about a specific topic. If I'm a business, I have to think about how can I use a community that will ultimately result in sales. Well, I'm building a captive audience here where I make all the rules instead of piggybacking on someone else's. But then again, it's very hard to build that audience.
So when you go home and you try to use Google+, Plus, as soon as you log in, when you go back to plus.google.com, the first thing that you see when you log in will be your personal account, your personal profile. So you'll need to click your icon at the top right to switch to your appropriate business. Most likely you only have one, but if you have multiple you'll see them there and then you can click. It looked like, well, I didn't switch. You did switch. You're just looking at this page. You did switch because at the top right corner, if you filled in your icon, it'll show you your icon of the business. And you can further confirm it by seeing you're running your Google Plus page, not your profile. When I'm on my profile, it says you're, this is your profile. Remember, profile equals person, page equals business. So I'm looking at the Victor Campos profile, and if I switch to this other client, I switch to the client. Notice the logo at the top right. Notice two notifications that I need to deal with. I'm looking at this other profile, but I can confirm that I'm editing this profile right here. Sometimes it looks a little different. It says edit, but it says my business. If I was looking at any of these other ones, I remember why, because this is a brand and this is a location. When it's a location, it'll look a little bit different. When it's a brand without a location, it'll look, it'll say Google Plus page, but it'll still say my business. Any general questions as we wrap up? Yes. Say that one more time, please. Oh, yes, yes. I should probably say it off the microphone, but um, I just don't like the people behind Facebook. I don't like the philosophy behind Facebook. I don't like the people that run it. I don't like how they run it and just don't like Facebook. But for business, I love it. For all the things that mess you up as a person, they're great for a business. The intrusions of privacy and all of that to personal, that's great for business. But for, and not to say that one corporation is better than another, Google's another big faceless corporation as well as Facebook, as well as Microsoft, as well as Apple, as well as Samsung. It's, you just have to pick which one you feel that you're gonna support or use them how you want. But for business, both are, all of them are great for business. For personal, you decide how you want to connect with friends and family. Yes? Uh, why do you think more men are using Google Plus? Is it because they don't want when Google Plus started off, it was an invite-only thing, and it was an invite-only among the tech community. Traditionally, the tech community has been heavily male. So the first early adopters to Google Plus were male, and they were passing out invitations to other males. And then, of course, it spread out to all the demographics, but then it continued to overall be a male-centric thing because it, a lot of times it's technical content being posted and that sort of thing. So it, it's most likely changing, uh, but it's probably still a little bit higher, a little bit more toward male. Final questions? Yeah, question. Yes. Access to those notes? Probably... I'm going to put them in as soon as I'm done with the lecture. So that'll be it for the moment. Uh, I'm going to put my notes in the folder just a moment. Remember, I've recorded everything here. If you were new this week, send me an email to request the lectures. We'll do it again next week. Next time, uh, we'll be talking about Facebook.